Yo, what the hell's going on guys? Welcome to your fourth responsive design tutorial and in this video we're going to take a look at the viewport meta tag. <laughs> Alright then, so in the last lesson I showed you that the default viewport width of browsers on a lot of mobile devices is quite wide. It's wider than the device itself, for example about 980 pixels. Okay, but the device itself is only what about 320 or 400 pixels wide. So when we view a website in a mobile browser which has a large viewport, that viewport takes all the content at that width, say 980 pixels, and squashes it into this width right here, 320 pixels, which is why we get this effect, this kind of squashed website. Okay, that is the default behavior of mobile browsers and their viewport width. Now we also saw that if we override the viewport width by using this meta viewport tag, then we can say to the mobile, look, we want the viewport to be this width so everything isn't squashed, okay? And we set the viewport width equal to the device width itself. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. All right then, guys. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and made a simple index.html file right here in brackets. That's the editor I'm using. And it's just a HTML tag with a head and a body. Then we've got this H1 right here. And we're going to put the viewport meta tag right up there in the head. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is say meta. And remember, a meta tag is just a way of adding additional information to a web page, such as the description or keywords, or in this case, information about the viewport. All right. So the name of this meta tag equals viewport. And then we're going to specify a few different properties or values, if you like, within the content attribute like that. OK, so all the different values go within here, the content. And the first thing I want to do is provide a width of the viewport that I want this web page to be viewed in. OK, so I'm going to override the default width of those mobile browsers. So content equals width. That's the property name. And then we say equals. And what we could do here is put a, um, a static value like 320 pixels, something like that. And that would make the viewport 320 pixels wide. However, that would be fine on a device which is 320 pixels wide, but not fine on a device which is like 408 pixels wide. So they're going to differ. So we need to wait to make the viewport the width of the device that it's being viewed on. And we can do that. We can just set width equal to device hyphen width and then no matter what the width of the device is when it comes across this viewport meta tag it's going to set the viewport equal to that device so if the de uh, device is 320 pixels so will the viewport width if the device is 480 pixels wide so will be the viewport width all right so that's pretty cool now that's almost all we need to do but i'm going to go through just a couple more things um i'm going to put a comma because we're going to do another value right here and this next value is going to be initial scale now you don't really need to do this because most um, mobile browsers come with a an initial scale of one anyway okay but i'm just going to set it equal to one and basically that's like the zoom level so one is no zoom at all okay if you wanted it twice as big you could set it to two that's a like a 100 percent zoom right or you could go to below zero, whatever you want to do, uh, sorry, below one. Okay, I'm going to set it equal to one and then show you another couple of things. We can say maximum scale and also minimum scale. So maximum scale equals one. So that basically means that I'm not allowing a user ever to zoom in, all right? Now, I don't like doing things like that. I just typically like leaving this at the most. OK, normally I don't even put this in. Sometimes I just leave it like that. OK, because this is the thing I want to control. So that is the viewport meta tag. And it's important that we put this in the head of all of our projects that we're making responsive so that we can override that default um, viewport width on a browser so that everything isn't squashed. And that way, when we go to change our CSS and adapt it for mobile, it's going to look correct when we view it. All right. So if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to subscribe, share and like, and I'll see you in the very next video.